In Luke's gospel, Jesus tells a story about a man and his two sons known as the prodigal son. But it is also a story about prodigal grace. After the son wishes his father were dead, after all, this is what it meant to ask for your inheritance while your dad was still alive. He goes off and spends a good deal of the family fortune and finds his return challenged by his older brother. And the older brother's reaction is exactly what we expect. What do you mean you're throwing a party? What do you mean you're throwing a banquet for this jerk? Don't you remember what he did the last time? Now he thinks that he can come back and simply by saying, Daddy, I'm sorry that all is forgiven and things can go back to the way that they were? What about me? And this is exactly what we expect. We expect ungrace. We expect punishment to the fullest extent. We expect for the prodigal to pay for his sins. We expect plain and simple for the prodigal to beg. And this is exactly what he begins to do. When he finally sees his father, he begins to fumble through his I'm sorry speech that he began preparing some time ago while pouring out buckets of pig slop. Pig slop that began looking good enough to eat. I mean, what kind of state of prolonged hunger do you have to be in in order to crave pig slop? For an undefined period of time, this son who hasn't apologized for anything or to anyone for some time begins to rattle off his I'm sorry speech. After the long trip home from the faraway country, he sees his father far off in a field some distance from his old home. His brow is sweaty from the heat of the Middle Eastern sun. The thongs of his sandals are broken from the long walk. He's dirty, he's tired, he's hungry. Visibly shaken, he avoids looking dad in the eyes and he sheepishly stutters through a broken voice in tears. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm not worthy to be called your son. The father stops him mid-speech, then he himself becomes a prodigal. You see, to be a prodigal means to be reckless. It means to be extravagant. It means to be so much so that you would be considered wasteful. In the end, the son gets what he least deserved. He deserved ungrace, he deserved disgrace, but he got amazing grace. We typically focus on the prodigal's exile and return, but this story is just as much about the other prodigal in it. Dad's prodigal love lavishes this repentant son with extravagant, with unwavering, with extraordinary grace, giving to him of all things the thing he least deserved. This is not a story about justice or fairness or you get what you deserve. It's all the contrary. That's why the story is shocking. That's why it inexorably draws you and me near so that we could get a glimpse into the heart of the prodigal father.